Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Uh, I'm just going to read this as a, as, a, as, a, uh, uh, as a template, okay? Now, the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, indeed, has God said you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, from the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat, but from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat from it or touch it or you will die. The serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. Translation in the Torah says, knowing good and bad. When the woman saw the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate. And she also gave to her husband and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. Listen, they did not make clothes. They only covered up their reproductive organs. Hmm. I want to deal with the hoarder series. And this first one is the spirit of low self-esteem. So, if you've been in our church for years, you would know every spring we go into a deliverance series. And so, it's spring. <laughs> so, there's going to be a lot of exodus today. And, uh, and God's going to help you out. Amen? Amen. You're going to shake that thing off in the fire. Spirit of the living God, thank you for the opportunity to share your word. I'm asking you for your help to give this body uh, the strength that's necessary for today. Tomorrow takes care of itself. So today, I'm asking you for daily provision today. In the name of Jesus, I'm asking for your strength. Now bless your kids so they can receive with meekness the engrafted word of God. Thank you for what you poured out. Thank you for what you're going to pour out. Thank you that we're going to be better because we've heard your word in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. I need you to look at somebody on your left and your right and tell them, who told you you was naked? Whew. Shout out, shout out to my parents. Yep, clap your hands for elders. You were in the Duhart. And Pastor Michael Carr and his wife Shanta Carr. Houston, Texas. My family in Houston. All right. <sighs> Y'all ready? Yeah. Let's see what we're going to get into. Uh, hoarders. <laughs> So hoarding, Javon, is actually, I don't know much about it because I'm not a hoarder. I don't have a lot of sentimental value to a lot of stuff. My sentimental value is found more so in people and relationships. But when it comes to things like a favorite blanket, T-shirt, maybe a, a, a trophy I received when I was a kid, or perhaps a chair I just don't want to get rid of because one day I may reupholster it. I just, I don't have that. It's just not my thing. Just, I don't have that thing in me that says, let's save all of the kids' baby clothes because one day they're going to want to see them. No, let's save an outfit and, uh, <laughs> and take pictures of the rest. Praise God. Because uh, I don't believe in hoarding and I don't like clutter. I'm a minimalist. I, I don't like a lot of stuff around me. I just... And, and I remember being in my college dormitory at Prairie View. You know, I was at PV. And while I was... While I was at Prairie View, Keneva, I was sitting in my dorm room, and I lived with two hoarders and two nasty boys that had <laughs> nasty issues. They weren't raised the way I was raised. My mama believed in Ajax and Comet. <laughs> my dad believed in acid and industrial cleaning and stuff like that, so I went to school quite high oftentimes off the chemicals in the house. <laughs> But I grew up with a sense of cleanliness and to the point where I do believe my mother's responsible for the demon of OCD 
that, <laughs> that I have had a hard time getting rid of. But anyway, with that being said, enough of my trauma bonding. Let's get right into what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't believe in hoarding and hoarding and all that kind of stuff, but it is a real thing. And it's difficult for people to get rid of stuff so they hoard it with the thoughts that I'll come back and maybe this will be valuable to me in the future. So hoarding is a disorder. I was watching a TV show about it. It was a, a whole thing on, on, on um, I think it's a &E or something, but it was a whole thing about hoarding and watching people have a difficult time, Ellen, with letting go of stuff, even trash. Uh, yeah. And so hoarding... Disorder is an ongoing difficulty throwing away a parting with possessions because you believe that you need to save them. And you may experience distress, this is according to the Mayo Clinic, you may experience distress at the thought of getting rid of the items. The Mayo Clinic says you gradually keep or gather a huge number of items regardless of their actual value. <laughs> that hoarding often creates extremely cramped living conditions with only narrow paths winding through stacks of your clutter. Countertops, sinks, stoves, desks, and stairways, and all other surfaces are usually piled with stuff. And you may not be able to use some areas for their intended purposes, watch this, because of what you have. For example, you may not be able to cook in your kitchen when there's no room, no more room inside your home, the clutter may spread to your garage, vehicles, your yard, and storage areas. Hoarding ranges from mild to severe, so you don't have to be a severe hoarder to be a hoarder. You can be a mild hoarder. You can look neat, look clean, look presentable, and when you go home, there is still clutter around you. We may not see the clutter on you, but you live in a closeted clutter environment. You can be a minor hoarder or a large, severe hoarder. In some cases, hoarding may not have much impact on your life, while in other cases, it seriously affects your daily functioning. And people with hoarding uh, disorder uh, may not see it as a problem. So getting them to take part in treatment can be challenging. But intensive treatment can help you understand how your beliefs and behaviors can be changed so that you can live a safer, more enjoyable life. I want to argue for a moment that I'm not necessarily talking about in this sermon series the hoarding of your home because I think it impacts you. But there must be something inside of the hoarder already lodged in the, the, in the personhood of their tent that causes them to filtrate their tent or causes them to make their, their tent filthy or full of clutter. Look at somebody and say, are you a hoarder? Are you a hoarder? I want to argue for a moment that what trash are we holding within us that's keeping us from being fully operable in the kingdom of God? That perhaps there is a bunch of stuff tucked on the counters of our soul, on the sinks of our purpose, that's keeping us from moving into the gifts and the graces. Come here, Holy Ghost. Moving into the gifts and the graces that God has placed on us because we are fully endowed and fully engulfed in the trash that nobody knows we got. We all, some of us, are hoarding even right now. You came in this room up into your head and your eyebrows full of stuff. Yeah. Well, in order to clean out the debris, we must have an intervention. Somebody got to come to your house, knock on the door and say, what are you willing to part with? Because I know you are tired of living in this filthy place as long as you've been living here. Who am I talking to? I'm sick and tired of the trash and the debris and the antiques that I think that I need in order to function when in actuality it's keeping me from fully engaging all that's in the kingdom of God for me to engage. I wonder if that relationship challenges are really centered around that I'm hard to connect to you because I'm hoarding something, an antique from a broken heart in a previous season that's making my, my path so narrow that it's difficult for you to get to me because you got to climb through all the debris of my soul just to get to know who I am. 
It's the hoarding. It's the hoarding. And so for the next few weeks or until Jesus comes back, ah, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the stuff. And one of the items God told me to pull out the trash bag today of our houses is low self-worth. So the question is, what is self-esteem? Am I born, y'all? Take good notes. We're about to fly through here. Self-esteem, I got 22 minutes. Self-esteem is confidence in one's own worth and abilities. And also, it is self-respect. Somebody shout self-respect. Self-respect is good self-esteem. When you respect yourself, there are certain standards that you live to. And there are certain ways you'll let people talk to you. And there's ways you won't let people talk to you when you have self-respect. When I have a level of self-respect, there's certain names you can't call me. You got to call me by my first name, my last name, or put a handle on the front of it when you have self-respect. There's certain tones you won't take with me when you know I have self-respect. Some people talk to us crazy because they know you don't respect yourself. And they'll know that you respond to the names. Uh-oh, what is this? What is this? I'm talking to you ladies. Some men call you names because you respond to that when your girlfriends call you that. You don't have enough self-respect about who you are. Don't get mad about him calling you that if your best friend can call you that. Self-respect. Look at somebody and say, you got you to respect yourself. And when you respect yourself, there's a certain way that you carry yourself. It's not arrogant to straighten up your back. It may be arrogant to toot up your nose, but it's not arrogant to straighten up your back and look at people eyeball to eyeball. That means you have a level of self-respect. And when you have self-respect, you respect other people. So self-esteem is confidence in your own worth and your own abilities. So to esteem something, Apostle Marcus, means to set it on a high value, to set how value on it. To esteem in Hebrew is the word hasab, which means to consider, to plan, to reckon, or to think over, to ponder over. That when I want to esteem something, I'm thinking of ways that I can make it valuable. I esteem, I plan, I consider, I think over, and I reckon of ways, Mama Irma, that I could, that I could bring value to this thing when I esteem it. When I esteem something, I take care of myself differently. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord. When we esteem something, we change up our diets a little bit because we esteem the gifts that God has given us. When we esteem something, there's certain things I won't intake because... Well, Listen to because I esteem myself in such a place. But the opposite of esteem is low self-esteem. And low self-esteem means you hold yourself, uh, not holding yourself in high regard. I want to argue this thought, theologically speaking, if I can, Apostle, you can always check me later. But uh, I'm actually okay with this. <laughs> but um, I think low self-esteem is really the offspring of comparison. I think... <laughs> I think, I really do think at the, at the substratum, at the root, help me, Holy Ghost, at the root of, of, of our confidence is when we start to measure. And when we measure, we are introducing ourselves to the offspring of low self-esteem. Uh, it's a comparison thing. I want to argue that even social media has produced a generation of people that even though they won't say it, we live by low self-worth. Ah, because we are, we are taking filters to make ourselves look better because we don't like the authentic thing that God... <laughs> Somebody get a picture of that sign. You, the authentic thing that God has done about us. I don't like the freckles in my face, so I will clear them out with this filter because so I can look like somebody I'm trying to look like. It's a thing of low self-esteem where their house is bigger than my house and their cars are nicer than my cars and we have learned to craft these images to America. And even if we only got 100 followers, we still craft these images out there to let people believe this thing about us even though that's not who we really are. You don't love that woman. Y'all took that picture, but you don't love her. You really don't like that man. Y'all know y'all fight all day long like cats and dogs. You know you ain't slept with that. Oh, Lord Jesus. You know, you know, you, you know you and that man are having real difficult challenges and problems. You, 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 come on here. Come on, talk to me. You know that ain't really what it is. You know that, you know, you know that's not really a relationship. You know you're not out to dinner with somebody else. Why are you pretending to act as if it's though so? you, come on here. We craft these images because of our low self-worth. 
Now AI jumped in the game and AI has you, has you changing the way you dress and give me a professional look with my picture. And we are so silly that we actually compliment the AI drawing and say, ooh girl, don't you look good? That's a great picture, man. Knowing it says all nothing but catfish. Low self-worth, plow, low self-worth. Hey, low self-worth, low self-esteem, low self-worth, low self-esteem, low self-esteem. So we live by social media and we get offended when people don't like our posts and, and we unfollow you after a while because you didn't follow me back in enough time and you should have known that I followed you. It's been two weeks, you ain't followed me back. I'm gonna unfollow you because we're trying to be acknowledged by people that don't even know you exist. And we keep commenting on celebrities' posts, hoping and tagging them, hoping and one one day they may say something back to you and With no self worth. <laughs> low self worth even impacts your relationship with God because you won't pray because you think God doesn't like you. Low self worth. You know, I really believe, Pastor Show, some people don't connect in because they battle with low self-worth. And low self-worth does create its own alternative universe. It literally, in the universe we're living in, where your body is housed, is the reality. But in the universe of low self-worth, which is below the reality here, you have created an alternative understanding where the same people you are encountering in this realm, you have a whole different context on how y'all even come together. They don't like me over there. I don't know. Something about me. No, nobody don't like you. You just live in the bubble of low self-esteem. You don't like yourself. It ain't about me not liking you. You don't like you. Here's the question. How did you get there? Hey, hey, hey. Help me, Holy Ghost. How, how, how did you get there? How, oh, how did you get there? Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3 might be a clue to how we got there. God tells Adam and Eve, he says, I don't want you to touch. Don't want you to touch this tree because if you get from the knowledge of good and evil and you take from this tree, he says, uh, he says, I don't want you to do that, man. It's going to be bad. You're going to die if you touch that. You're going to die. You're going to die because now you got to make decisions. If this tree, I make all the decisions for you. <laughs> that tree, you got to make decisions for yourself. And you don't have the capacity to know what I know and make a decision. <laughs> You're not like, you're in my image, but you're not me. Yeah. yeah, you're my image. So Adam and Eve have the conversation with the snake. Well, the snake actually walks up to Eve, has the conversation with Eve, and tells her, he tells her, you know, if you take from this fruit, Pastor Chris, you're going to be just like God. Just like God. Now, we all have argued, theologically speaking, Antonio, for years that, uh, I know I have, that they were already like God. Yep. They were already like God. They were already, but that's not what the snake was saying. Show us. Show us. No, it's comparison. Yeah. What he translated, can I translate it out what he's saying in Hebrew? You'll be a God. You'll be like God. You'll be a God. They wanted to be like God. They were in his image, in his likeness, in his similitude, but they wanted to be a God. That's what that was. And when she looked at the tree and saw that it was good for fruit, she now is at the place where, hmm, if it's just this, I wonder, I wonder, if she thought in her heart, in her mind, this will let me be like God? I could be a God? See the comparison? And when she fell into comparison and their eyes were open, low self-esteem was the result. They covered themselves up with the leaves. The leaves, the leaves. Not just any leaf, but the fig leaves. They didn't sew clothes. They only covered up their reproductive organs because, I mean, they were naked. They're transparent now. I'm, I'm, you see me, I see you. And this thing comes upon him, and the devil, the devil did this. And God says, who told y'all? 
Who told you that you were naked? Let me see if I can exegete that son. Who gave y'all low self-worth? <laughs> Where are you, Adam? I'm hiding because I hid myself because they realize they're not, they not like them. It's, it's, it's comparison. It's all comparison. It's the idea of comparison. But I know you're probably thinking, well, then, okay, well, then, okay, let's look at it again. Jeremiah chapter 1. Yeah. Witness, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 6, God is talking to the prophet. He says, then I said, Elias, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak because I am a youth. He's comparing it to something because he has the context of history with prophets. I'm not like these grown men. There's this, there's this thing where you start looking at what you are not. God says, don't tell them that you are, don't say that you are you. Because everywhere I send you shall go, and all that I command you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord stretched out his hand, touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, behold, I put my words in your mouth. He's talking to a young man. This young man is looking at the inadequacies of his speech, and it's caused him to develop a moment in tension with God concerning his self -worth. I'm not old enough. I'm not, I'm not old enough. Do I need another witness? Yeah. Judges chapter 6. I can walk all day long with this. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat under the tree, under the oak that was in Oprah, uh, which belonged to Joash, and his son Gideon was beating out the wheat in the wine press in order to save it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord, which is Christ, the anthropomorphic incarnation, the Lord is with you, O valiant warrior. Then Gideon said to him, O oh Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about? I thought I sent it in my bed. Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? Uh, but now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Lord looked at him and said, go in this your strength. Say that with me. Go in this your strength and deliver Israel from the hand of the Midian. Have I not sent you? He, he says, he tells him, he says in verse 13, he says, my Lord, if you would, why then is all this happening, etc. Look what he says in verse 15. He says, oh Lord, how shall I deliver Israel? Behold, read this with me, ready, read. Behold, my family is the least in Manasseh and I'm the youngest. Look at that low self-worth. How can I be a deliverer? When I'm, I'm, we in the, I'm part of the least family of Manasseh. Yeah. Yeah. So now he's looking at his family's condition. Yeah. And that caused low self-worth in him yeah. to believe that God can't use him. Oh, but it don't stop there. It don't stop there. John chapter 4, New Testament, verse 7. It says, there came a woman of Samaria to draw water. He said to her, give me a drink. For the disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Therefore, the Samaritan woman said, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink since I'm a Samaritan? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. This whole concept of this conversation created or introduced the insecurity in this woman. How can you talk to me? I'm a Samaritan. We make it seem like she had an attitude, but I don't believe that. I wonder if her low self-worth even is the reason why Jesus had the conversation further about all the men she had been with. Do you see it in the text? He's talking to a woman who's in all kinds of relationships. And I think it's in part, Pastor Chris, because she has low self-worth. Sometimes because of our low self-esteem or the lack thereof self-esteem, we pass ourselves out to everybody. It's this sense of I want to be held because my self-esteem is shot. If you can make me feel good for the next few hours, well, minutes, really. If you can make me feel good. It's this, it's this, it's this thing where I just, I just need a hit. It's like a junkie. I just need, I need a high to help me escape. From the hoarding yeah. that I'm into. I wonder if sin yeah. is a result to hoarding. Yeah. 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 Well, isn't the hoarding the sin? No, yeah, but 
I wonder if it's a result. Do we, the certain things that we accumulate lead to other things? Because you didn't just start out with a lampshade. It didn't begin with grandma's sofa. Or an old patio set that you won't let go of. It started possibly with an old TV. And then the new TV you set on top of that TV. But didn't, <laughs> but didn't want to get rid of that TV. Then you went and got the flat screens but kept that TV and moved that TV into the garage. It became the garage TV. Then once you got more TVs, you decided to keep that TV because that TV is now an antique one. Everybody know we always used to have this kind of TV. <laughs> Somebody shout low self-esteem. Low self-esteem is when a person is extremely critical of themselves. Write that down. Low self-esteem. Say that with me. Low self-esteem is when I'm extremely critical of myself. Oh, Jesus. It's when nobody else got to be hard on you. You're too hard on yourself. I've been there. You just beat yourself up. You don't give yourself a chance to receive any kind of grace whatsoever because of low self-worth. We all battle with the seasons of it because the enemy is the accuser of the brethren. And he whispers all day long about what you are not. He's on, he's on his assignment. Yeah. yeah. And we are critical of ourselves. Yeah. Low self-esteem says, I'm not smart enough. I just, I you know, that's okay. I mean, I'm just, I mean, I'm just going to just be here. I'm just going to just, uh, just love God and just be at church. And, um, well, if somebody says something to me, I'll, you know, one day I may just get in a relationship. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just, you know, just, I don't know. I'm just kind of just low self-esteem. I'm just kind of. And, uh, and low self-esteem is like Homer Simpson just backing into the bushes. It's just when, the, when the, room, the room is full of people, you're the one that just sits there and watch everybody interact because you're so browbeaten. With Everything in you, though, wants to jump out and, and, and be a part. You want to be a part, but you're so browbeaten by the spirit of low self-worth. It oppresses you to think that before you even interact, you automatically assume they're going to reject you. It's the offspring of comparison. I want to be strong, but I don't know how. I want to be engaged. I want to double dutch with everybody else. I want to jump in. And it starts quite early because you could be a child dealing with the same thing. And you're, some of you watching your babies, you assume just because they come home and they play the video games that they are mentally and emotionally okay. No, you don't know that while everybody else is playing in school, your kid is in the corner with their head down, their hands in the pocket because a demon of low self-worth has caused them to think low of themselves than they should because they might be a little bit overweight or because they're more developed than they should be at their age or because they have an asthma or because they have they have they have shorter hair or because they're darker skinned or because they're brighter skinned or because their teeth are now having challenges or because they're wearing braces or because they're cute and some boys like to pick at you because they like you but at 10 years old you don't know how to interpret that somebody actually likes you so they pull it on you and they, they kick at you and it's caused your child self-esteem and we think it's okay because they're playing the video game and watching movies with us and laughing at the table knowing that when they go back to their room they're scared to go to school because of low self-worth it's a demon it's a demon it's a demon that hunts through the bloodline it's a demon it's a demon of spirit that causes kids to isolate themselves even to the point of suicide it's a demon it's low self-worth hey 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 dig it up it's low self-worth hey 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 it's low self-worth Low self-esteem that makes you feel like nobody sees you. You're not smart enough. You're not good enough. You're not attractive enough. You're too heavy. You're too thin. Yeah, that works too. You're too thin. Here's one. You're way too pretty. Because sometimes, just because they fine on the outside does not mean they're okay internally. I've seen plenty of women and men that I've known who were very attractive people. But when I spoke to them, they couldn't look me in the eyes. Why? Because the low self-esteem was present. It's comparison. 
We compare. We compare our marriages to their marriage. Their marriage looks wonderful. They seem so in love. You compare. Low self-worth. What if I told you who you think is what they are? Ain't really who they are. I done been in some green rooms in my life now with some of these artists and preachers that you love. And I realized behind closed doors, apostle, you are not who I thought you were. My self-esteem shot up. Sometimes you got to see it to know you ain't that bad. Sometimes you got to see it to know you actually all right. God's got his hand on you, Kevin. Keep on plowing, boy. You got integrity. Keep on plowing. You may not have the same education level they got, but keep on plowing. You got something. Comparison. It's, 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 it's a thing in culture that makes us compare. You know what else is low self-esteem? It downplays or ignores your positive qualities. It'll make you downplay yourself. Pastor Tony, somebody's boy, you showed it, pray today. Oh, we ain't know to God be the glory. You sure it was okay? Because I, I just felt like I kept fumbling on my words. That's that low self-esteem trying to pop in. Trying to make you think that you're not good enough. You're not qualified. And then what happens is next time you get ready to pray, you're trying to prove. It creates striving in you. Because you want to be affirmed. You want to be affirmed. Does apostle like this? Does apostle like this? Apostle was in his phone. He wouldn't pay. Apostle was texting somebody to tell him to turn the AC on. I'm tapped in, but I got it. It's hot in here. Turn the AC on. <laughs> Low self-esteem judges themselves to be inferior to their peers. Low self-esteem causes you to use negative words to describe yourself like stupid, like fat, like ugly. Some of us have said that about ourselves. You've looked in the mirror and looked at yourself and said, I don't like the way I look. And then agreed with the enemy when he said, yeah, I understand. And you agreed, yeah. Then you said, I'm just going to let myself go. Because it's too much work to try to get myself together. Low self-esteem. Steve Harvey said something years ago, Apostle Wallace, he said, uh, you ain't got to be the fittest man in the room or the finest man in the room. But he was saying on suits, he said, but you can be the best dressed. I know some big guys that can put it together. And they walk in the room, the ladies be like, who is that? It's, y'all, y'all, y'all better talk to me. I don't care how much you put on over the years. It's how you dress that thing up. I ain't as fit as I used to be. But when I put a suit on, you can't tell me nothing. You ain't got to like it. I like it. <laughs> but, you, know, <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? As y'all say, you feel me? <laughs> Low self-esteem has discussions with themselves. It's called self-talk. It's always negative, it's critical, and it's self-blaming. You, somebody else did something to you and you make it your fault. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. What are you sorry for? I did that. Oh, I'm sorry. And what happens is the enemy plays on your naivete. And then he'll send abusers to you. Can y'all hear what I'm trying to tell you? This is why I was talking to the Lord about this yesterday, Kim. He said, he says, he says, son, confident people attract confident people. But people who aren't confident attract users and abusers. I started thinking, Apostle, I've not met a confident person who's been around a bunch of users. They're too confident for you to attack them. But when your self-worth is low, the abusers are attracted to you. I can sniff the opportunity to take advantage of you because you smell like low self-worth. It has a scent. It has an aroma. It's a pheromone. It's a, I can sense you don't have no walls. I must be born, y'all. 
Low self-esteem. I know, mama, it's tight. Lord, loosen it up. The room is crazy. The room said, <laughs> Take a deep breath and blow it out, please. Blow it out. Blow in front of you, though. Blow it out. <laughs> Shake it in the fire. <laughs> Low self-esteem doesn't believe a person who compliments them. We can tell you all day long that you are good at something. We can tell you all day, man, man, you, man, you, you like, huh? <laughs> like, man, you look good today. <laughs> you look, you look good. Like, hold on, no, no. Let's sit in the compliment we gave you. Why are you deflecting? You better take it. These little girls come to the stage after church, the little small ones, you know, my God, baby, and others. They be like, hey, Apostle. I take them, I be like, spin them around. Like, look at that. Look at that jean jacket. Look at them shoes. Look at them socks. Girl, you, uh uh, turn around, turn around. Let me see it. Whole outfit. I'm trying to build that self esteem. Let me teach you now a man of God can compliment you and not want nothing from you. Let me show you. Hey, girl. Hey, sis. Y'all look wonderful today. You got to say it right, though. Y'all look wonderful today. You can't be like. <laughs> I'm trying to teach now. That's how you started. Hey, all oh, y'all look great, man. Looks wonderful. I love it. Praise God. My sisters be killing. Because they need to feel safe when they come to church. All right. Can I keep going? Low, low self-esteem can reduce the quality of a person's life in many different ways. Number one, it gives you negative feelings. Write that down, negative feelings. Write it down. It's that constant self-criticism that leads to sadness, depression. Some of us are depressed because we talked ourselves into it. Because the enemy, Deandra, would throw you a bone and tell you that you're losing. And you'll hang on to that. It's like a rope, rather. You just be climbing, up, trying, to, trying to, and he'll just keep lowering the rope. You keep on climbing. He's lowering that rope until you're in this abyss of isolation. Yeah. It's low self-worth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what else it does? It can create relationship problems. Yeah. For example, they may tolerate all sorts of unreasonable behavior from partners because they believe they must earn and love friendship. You cannot be loved that you're unlovable. This is the best I'm going to be able to do. Is this abusive, verbal abusive relationship? This is the best I can do. Who's going to like me? Who's going to want me? It's the scheme of hell. Who's going to accept me? Who's going to see me? So I'll stay right here. It's the, it's, the, it's the I'll stay with the devil I do know. For the, the devil I don't know. The dumb stuff. You know what else it does? Fear of trying. When you walk around with low self-worth, you are afraid to try. Because yeah. you, you think you're going to fail. Yeah. You're afraid to step out there and be seen. Are y'all here? Yeah. It's that fear. It grips you. It, 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 it also makes you avoid challenges. So people think that there's some people, Pastor Show, think that they're peacekeepers. But what they really are is they have low self-worth. Because wow. one of the greatest flexes of a person with low self-esteem is to act like they just full of peace. Self-confidence is confrontational. Oh, Lord. Because self-confidence means I got a voice. No, no. You, hold on. Let, let's get this straight. I love you. I know you love... Uh, praise God. Before we get to that, we need to talk about what you just said. You said so-and-so and so-and-so to me. Now, did I disrespect you? No, well, you don't disrespect me. We good? We good. All right, I love you. Let's go back to what we got to do. That's self-confidence. But when you sit up here like, well, you know, I just, I just, no, nah, I don't want to say nothing because I'm just going to keep it at peace. That's low self-worth. Because you're not setting yourself in value. I'm not talking about scrapping and cussing folk out. That's sin. I'm talking about, that's, look at somebody and tell them, that's sin. Wow, bless you. That's sin. <laughs> you know what else in low happens in low self-esteem? Karen, you know what else? Perfectionism. Y'all yeah. write that down. This is when a person may push themselves to become an overachiever. 
is to atone for what they see as their inferiority. When you see a person who's a perfectionist always striving to be the best, it's because they have deep insecurities that you don't see. There are things about them they don't like. So if I accomplish a lot, then you have to bypass all of that. Some of this education is not about education. Some of it's about covering up low self-worth. Some of this, I got my, my grime getting the bag and getting to the bag. I got to get this bag. I got to get this bag. That's low self-esteem. Is it? Yeah. Because if the goal is just to get to the bag, it's so that I can have this because the truth of the matter is I'm probably one step away from a family who's full of poverty. My insecurity is my past, where I came from. You got to check your motives. You know what else? Fear of judgment. Write that down. Mm -hmm. People with low self-worth avoid activities that involve other people, like sports and social events. They don't like to go. That's not that they don't show up because they don't like you. They're just afraid to engage. My mom must be born, y'all. <laughs> Write this down. Low resilience. A person with low self-esteem finds it hard to cope with a challenging life event because they already believe themselves as hopeless. So they have no resilience. There's another one. Lack of self-care. The person with low self-worth, Devon, may care so little that they neglect or abuse themselves. So they drink themselves into oblivion. That's low self-worth. Or smoke yourself into the third heaven. <laughs> and while he's talking about it, y'all be careful with that stuff. I know I got some weed smokers in here. Let me tell you something. Let's tell the truth. I just saw a study on, on, on CNN and Forbes yesterday. I sent it to Pastor Kim. They just said that that stuff is making folk schizophrenic. One of these kids out here spinning the block in their head and running around acting crazy. You know why? Because they're putting something in that. That's not, that's not what it used to be. And I'm not saying to touch it at all. Leave it alone. But it's been tampered with now. Where all these flavors come from? I ain't stupid. I know what it is. And grow all these flavors. That's art. That's, that's chemically engineered. And you put that liquid poison in your flesh. And let me tell you something. One day we're going to find you down the street on Pan Vital. Talking about when's Easter. Come on, nudge somebody and say, leave that stuff alone, leave that stuff alone. When you got high rep value for who you are, there's some things you don't put into your flesh when you respect yourself. And if you 40 plus, you too old for that anyway. You're too old for that. Pull your pants up. You're 40 years old. Pull your pants up. Leave them sagging days alone. You're too old for that. If you're 21 and you still say, pull your pants up. You're too old for that. There's an expiration date for thugging. You got kids, that's over. I said it's over. Especially you thugs that have both parents in the home. Shame on you. You ain't about that life. Your heart pump Kool-Aid, you're not about that life. You got a problem with that. Meet me outside. I grew up in the 90s. I was around knuckleheads that was about that. And they didn't want to be like that. It was the culture that messed with their self-esteem. All right. Here's the last one. Low self-worth creates self-harming behavior. 
You ready? Yeah. Drug abuse, Come on. eating disorders, yeah. and even suicide. <sighs> I'm just about done. So what is the, what's the remedy? <laughs> you better preach that sermon, lady. What's, how do we get out of this? How do, we got here because of so many reasons. Sometimes it's family, people word cursing you, you know, especially parents. If you've been told by a, a parent you were ugly or you ain't cute or you, you, you getting too thick. I mean, that stuff messes with you. You 110 pounds now, and you're still thinking, I'm thick, because <laughs> it's hardwired in your head. Putting your life on the line for, what's that stuff called? They be talking about online now. Oh, yeah, Olympic, Olympic. You put your life on the line for that. I've been watching the news. They talking about this stuff right now. I'm telling you, they talking about it. They talking about it right now. I was watching that Oprah Winfrey thing. That's why I saw it on. You got to be careful. All of that is because we're crafting an image because we don't like the way we look. Say amen to this. Come on now. It's, it's true. We got to be careful. So we're going to punch the devil in the eye. Romans 12 and 3. I got to turn my plow. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Put that on the screen. Everybody read this with me as loud as you can. Ready? For through the grace given to me. I need you to say this over yourself. I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly than you ought to think, but to have sound judgment. That means to be sober, as God has allowed it to each a measure of faith. Right? I got to be sober in my thinking. I don't need to be thinking highly. Self-worth is... Found in God. So I don't need to be arrogant. Because what I can do is because he allowed me to do it. That's sound, sober judgment of yourself. But let's keep going. I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 2. It says, all the ways of a man are clean in his own sight. But the Lord, he weighs the motives. Right? That means he examines, he checks, he corrects, he measures up, he assesses, he calculates the size of your motive. Oh, I'm running out of time. So let's affirm ourselves. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Go. Ephesians 2, 10. Read this with me as loud as you can. Ephesians 2, 10. I'm taking too much time. Ready? Ready? Read. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand. Look at somebody say, I'm his masterpiece. One translation says, I'm a masterpiece. That says workmanship. I like masterpiece. I'm his masterpiece. Say it I'm his masterpiece. That he created in Christ Jesus for good works. I'm his masterpiece. Regardless of how you may feel about yourself, this is what you need to know about yourself. You are his workmanship. Are y'all here? You are right now. Well, I did this. I don't care what you did. You are his workmanship. I don't care what you did last night. I don't care. You are his workmanship. I don't care who you did it with. I don't care how long you did it. I need this church to talk. I don't care. You are his work. Let me get in y'all's face. I don't care how long you've been in this season. You are his masterpiece and his workmanship. And you ought to give the devil a black eye and tell him every now and then, I know where I've been, but I also know that I am his workmanship. He's got his hand on my life. He has his hand on my life. Hey, I am his masterpiece. You got to say that with a whole attitude. Some of y'all too cute. Y'all too Hollywood with, with the enemy. You got to get ratchet with him. You got to become a whole hood rat when it comes to talking that talk. Y'all quiet up here. You got to act like they used to act back in the days when folks start scrapping. They had their bottle of Vaseline and put on their whatever, took those nails up, the Leon press-ons, because you got ready to scrap. And you got to be that kind of bully with the enemy. 
You don't let him sit up here and tell you what you are not. You tell him what you are. I am his workmanship. This is how, hey, 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 this is how you fight. You start talking, hey, 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 hey. you start talking that noise. You start talking that scripture. You start quoting that text. I don't care if your mind don't agree with what you are saying. This ain't about your head. This is about your spirit, man. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 10. Read it. Chapter, chapter 2, chapter 32, verse 10, 32, 10. Just going through my road, just the way I gave it to you. He said he found him in the desert land. And in the howling waste of the wilderness, he uncircled him. And he cared for him. And he guarded him as the pupil of his eye. Well, that's one translation, but I like the other translation better. It says he's the apple of his eye. Look at somebody and say, I'm the apple of his eye. No, no, no. Touch three people I'm the apple of his eye. I'm his workmanship, and I'm the apple of his eye. If don't nobody else tell you you look cute, you're the apple of his eye. And there's been times I had to tell myself that when the enemy was trying to put me into a place of seclusion, I had to tell myself, I'm the apple of his eye. Nobody knew I was going into a dark hole, but I had to tell myself, I'm the apple of his eye. I don't feel like the apple, but my word declares, his word declares, I'm the apple of his eye. I am his workmanship, and I'm the apple of his eye. Run on down to Psalm 117. Psalm 117, verse 7. The scripture says in Psalm 117, verse 7, I'll read it. The works of his hands are faithful. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his precepts are sure, which means that all of his precepts, that means I am the work of his hands. And because I am the work of his hands, which are truth and justice, all of his precepts, all his thoughts concerning me, his intentions concerning me me are sure your, your intentions concerning yourself may not always be sure but his intentions concerning you are sure now I don't know what I'm feeling right now but some of you have a hard time believing that somebody can believe that well about you because you've been so focused on trying to prove and trying to dig yourself out of the hole of low self worth but in the name of Jesus I rebuke that scheme in this room I sense it of people that don't believe what God actually said about you I know your family has told you up and you've told yourself up pretty good but it's time you try with his word try what he has said about you i feel like preaching this thing psalm 139 and 14 says psalm 139 and 14 we read it with me i will give thanks to you shout it i will give thanks to you what for i am i need you to shout that right there i am fearfully then david bragged on he says wonderful are your works and my soul Boy, he's talking that kind of talk. That sounds like a man who knows what it's like to be depressed. But instead of crying about it, that man started testifying. He said, fearfully and wonderfully made I am. And wonderful all your works and my soul, my soul, my mind, my will, my emotion, my intellect, my imagination. It knows it all too well. Look at somebody tell them, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. You ain't got to like these curves. You ain't got to like these straight lines. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I may have picked up a few pounds, but I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I lost my hair, but I'm fearfully and wonderfully. He knows every hair on my head and every poor hair used to come out of. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. My soul knows it. My soul knows it. Woo! I feel something about the break in this room. My soul knows it. My soul knows it well. My soul, say to my soul knows that well. My mind knows that well. I'm fit, I'm fine, y'all. I look good. Oh, my mama. Oh, my, I look fine. I know that about me. I know that about me. You ain't got to like, I know that about me. You got to be hood with the type of quoting you got to get into. Some of y'all too weak. You're always crying about it. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And start decreeing that word over your life in the season of low self-esteem. Tell that devil to shut up. I'm the apple of his eye. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It's the idea of do you know who I am? Yeah. I ain't got time to finish all that. But my favorite, my favorite is Isaiah 61 and 10. Isaiah 61 and 10. It says, I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. 
my soul will exult in my God. For he hath clothed me with garments of salvation. And he has wrapped me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland. And as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Give me the next verse. verse For the earth forth is sprouts. And as a garden causes the things to sow and to spring up. So the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before the name. Look at somebody and tell them, I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. I was battling with low self-esteem, but I am the righteousness of God. I was battling with low self-worth, but I am the righteousness of God. You got to quote it till you feel it. You got to say it till the tears come down your face. You got to say it till you believe it with everything in your belly. This is belly work. You got to say it like you know that you know that you know. That's old school. That you know 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 that even if I disagree with what I'm saying in my soul, my spirit knows that this is the truth, that I am the righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Look at your neighbor down on your own tell him say neighbor the days of low self-esteem are coming to an end tell somebody else down your will tell them the days of low self-esteem are coming to an end it's time for me to believe everything God said about me it's time for you to believe everything that word declares over you I don't know about you but I'm sick and tired of the enemy playing games with our emotion I am sick and tired of the devil playing games with God's people's understanding I am sick and tired of the wicked one playing games with your mind and in the name of Jesus I'm pulling you out by the power of the Holy Ghost out of all low self esteem and low self worth pull on your neighbor and tell him neighbor come out of that cave of low self-esteem tell them come out of that den of low worth come out of that cave of thinking of yourself as nothing tell them the devil is a liar and if i'm coming out you coming out as well i refuse to let anybody on my road stay in that place of low self-worth the devil is he's a liar he's a liar with a bad weave i can't stand him look at somebody down your row and tell him say neighbor who told you that you were naked when you've been clothed with righteousness when you've been clothed with the garment of praise when you've been clothed as God's masterpiece when you've been clothed as God's workmanship look at somebody down your row and tell them I'm coming out I'm coming out my values are going up my standards are going up my yeah yeah my standards are going who that for my standards are going up my values going up I'm too expensive you are too expensive to let the enemy beat you up. Hey, hey, hey. I feel the Holy Ghost. You worth too hey, you worth too much. You mean too much to let yourself be beat up. I don't care what your ex said about you. I don't care what your ex, your baby mama, baby daddy said about you. I don't care what your parents said about you. I don't care. I don't care what the devil said about you. No weapon formed against you. And because we don't believe, we get beat up. But you coming out. If you're in this room, and you know low self-worth has been your issue. Get to this altar right now, quickly, quickly.